So today is finally time to make a video about my street photography tips. They are the first one that came to my mind when I started to script this video, so it's not a fully extensive list and I will go through them in no particular order. I will just try to uh, maybe start with the one that are more relevant to me. As I said, they are more centered around street photography, but I think that some of them are really transferable to any other kind of photography. Today I'm pretty old school and I have my little paper notes uh, with my bullet points, so let's not wait any longer and go through all of them one by one. Apart from exceptional cases where you would actually want to include some motion blur in your pictures, a photo that is blurry because of a shutter speed being too slow is a failed photo, I think. Oftentimes you will hear that you must use the lowest ISO available in your camera to have the most clear and pristine pictures. But if you have a basic knowledge of how the exposure triangle works, having a low ISO will lead to a slower shutter speed. In the streets where your subjects are most of the time in motion, having a shutter speed that is too slow will most probably lead to a blurry picture. And if you give me the choice between a photo that is sharp but slightly noisy because of a higher ISO and another picture that is shot at the lowest possible ISO but even slightly blurry, I will 100% go for the one that is sharp because with modern cameras, unless you are really at crazy high ISO, uh, the files are totally usable. That said, I most of the time use the aperture priority mode on my cameras when out shooting in the streets in combination with auto ISO up to 6400. And then I set my minimum shutter speed depending on the lens I'm using. But most of the time I set it around 1 over 250 or even 1 over 500 if I'm using a really long lens. If it's not your first time watching a video about street photography, you must have already heard about the fishing technique. The concept is that when you finally have a composition that you want to capture, you just take position and wait for your subject to enter and actually get where you want it to be in the frame and then take a quick burst to maximize the chance to have the perfect photo. Overall, the fishing technique wants you to be there before your subject and I take this mindset when I want to take a picture that will not rely entirely on the overall composition but when I'm more interested by some particular character in the street. It could be because of their clothes, their hairstyle or whatever. When I spot such person in the street, I try to figure out where he's heading to. Um, the ideal scenario is that he would be heading towards me and then I just put myself in position, hold my camera and wait for this person to walk into my frame and capture the photo. But because you were there a few seconds before, it won't feel like you just chase that person to take the pictures. As a result, it's really unlikely that this person will run into you asking um, if you take pictures of them and why you kind of proactively uh, take a pictures of their face. I think that's a really good tip for the more introvert or the more shy street photographers, which I still am up to this day. My third tip for you is that you should go out light. I'm not the perfect example because my main street photography, photography and video camera is the A7 IV, which is not really a camera that you could uh, qualify as small and light. But what I mean is that when you go out for a photo walk, I think you should commit to one lens and one camera. So you have a setup that can fit in a small backpack or a sling bag, for example. If you do so, I'm pretty sure that your back, uh, your legs and your body will be happier at the end of the photo walk. And you will see that committing to a simple and unique setup, your brain will be free of any distractions. It won't be messing around and think that maybe this composition works well with the other lens you have in the backpack or whatever. So this one will be more a composition tip. If you have seen any of my previous videos, you would have noticed that one thing I like to do is blocking my frame. It could be by standing really close to a pole or trying to incorporate some plants in the foreground, for example. What it does is that it adds some depth to your pictures and overall, I think you will end up with more dynamic images. If you apply this technique, especially on horizontal pictures, you will also notice that it adds something a little bit 
cinematic, I think. Lastly, blocking your frame with any sort of foreground will also help you to emphasize on the subject without relying on heavy vignetting in post-production that could really look unnatural or to just add too much brush on your subject to make it pop. I also watch a lot of other photographers doing their own thing on YouTube or uh, Instagram Reels or whatever. But what I noticed in these kind of videos is that some of them really take the vertical composition as a standard. And this kind of bothers me because I feel like it's just that they are being brainwashed by um, the social media and especially Instagram that really encourages you to post uh, vertical pictures. I've seen this in many other POV videos where the photographer actually point to anything with the camera hold vertically as a standard. And if you just think and look at our own human eyes, both of our eyes are on a horizontal plan and not vertical, right? And because of that, I think our natural field of view is more horizontal than a vertical, actually. My opinion is that the standard should be the landscape orientation, but still, if I'm wrong about this, I think that we should not have any standard at all, just trying to look at what's around us when we are out shooting and really mindfully think about what could be best for this actual scene and not just shooting to fit in this particular format that is popular on Instagram. And if you are someone like me that often tries to kind of replicate the scenes uh, we can see in movies, you will notice that if you shoot horizontally, your shot will be more likely to actually resemble what you've seen on the big screen. This one will be more directed towards the people that feel sometimes a bit uninspired because they don't have the opportunity to travel or they consider living in somewhere that is considered boring. If that's the case, I would suggest you to play with weather and also times of the day because the exact same place can have so much different atmosphere depending on if you go out to shoot really early in the morning, middle of the day, middle of the night, or if it's under heavy rain or foggy, for example. If you do so, I think you will have a new and refreshed perspective on that particular area. And I'm sure you will be excited to go out and shoot in what you consider to be a boring place. So this one I'm guilty to not applying it sometimes actually. If you plan to shoot that particular area at this time of the day, for example golden hour, I would strongly suggest you if possible, to uh, get there earlier than expected. It happened so many times to me that I wanted to just go out in time to uh, shoot this particular time of the day because I expected some nice light and yeah, just uh, interesting light patterns to, uh, to happen. And more often than not, I was just going out too late and taking some pictures along the way. And when I finally reached the desired area, I noticed that the light I was hoping for was already gone. If your schedule allows it, just go out 30 minutes, one hour before than you intended. Doing so, you will have time to uh, photograph anything interesting you would find on the way. And if you end up on location 30, 45 minutes early, then you have plenty of time to analyze more the location and find some good composition. So this one is a pretty simple one, but I do own a camera strap that I often use when I'm on a shoot where my role is to actually take pictures. But when I go out shooting for myself and go out on the streets, I tend to just take the camera as it is and hold the camera in my hand all the time. You would think that using a strap and having your camera just balancing around your waist is plenty good and you can have quick access to it anytime. But to me, even though really small, it can be this small amount of resistance um, preventing me from actually taking the camera and taking the shot. Taking a picture is not a guarantee of ending up with a good image, but at least you would have give yourself the opportunity and if no results, it's just another opportunity to practice. Holding your hand at all times will also minimize the time you need to react if anything special happens in the street. So when I go out to shoot for myself, the camera straps stays at home and I just take a backpack or a sling bag to put my camera if needed, if I just take a break or step into a shop or something. 
And the last one is actually not directly linked to the camera, to the gear or whatever, but it is just as simple as having good and reliable footwear. This summer I went on a solo trip to Kyoto to capture as many things as I could and looking at the data I have reached a minimum of 30,000 steps every day and it was not just steps on the treadmill. These were kilometers that allowed me to move from location to location or just circle around the same area and being just exposed to more photo opportunities. I'm pretty sure that if my feet started hurting after 5,000 steps it would have been the perfect excuse to step into a cafe or sit on a bench and just relax instead of go out and seek for the perfect shots. I think I've covered all the points I wanted to talk about today so I hope you enjoyed this video and that you can find anything interesting in it. So as I said it's not an extensive list so I'm pretty sure there's room for a follow-up video if any interest from you. On that note I'm out and already looking forward to meet you in the next one. Bye.